And the migrant crisis at the southern border is impacting communities all over America, including here. Now, seven of the eight counties in western New York have declared states of emergency. Most agree it's an issue only the federal government can truly solve. Meanwhile, the northern border is finally back to normal after COVID restrictions were lifted. One of our lawmakers is pushing the Biden administration to come up with a plan now to avoid border chaos with Canada in the future. And the other big national story that impacts all of us is the debt ceiling as we look live right now uh, at the White House and also Capitol Hill. Tonight it happens that talks have broken off between the Republican speaker and President Biden's team. We're discussing all of this with one of your federal lawmakers. And joining us now is Congressman Brian Higgins, who represents New York's 26th congressional district, covering much of Erie and Niagara counties. Congressman, we appreciate you taking some time for us here, and I do want to start there with the migrant crisis. Niagara County, which you represent, uh, among those that has declared this state of emergency related to asylum seekers being moved here. I think it's fair to say few people, probably yourself included, have confidence that Congress and the White House at the federal level, we're going to come to some kind of bipartisan way to deal with immigration overall. We've talked about this for so long, but in terms of the immediate situation we're dealing with as a federal representative, what does the federal government need to be doing right now to help New York State, our counties, localities and, and nonprofit groups that are dealing with this influx? Well, provide uh, localities with the financial assistance that they need to facilitate a humanitarian treatment of these uh, asylum seekers. Uh, they, are, uh, they are, you know, fleeing from areas uh, from violence, from persecution, and that's where they're heading. They're heading north into the United States. Uh, the reality is uh, Congress has failed in this responsibility for two decades uh, to enact uh, comprehensive bipartisan uh, immigration reform. We have a country that everybody wants to be in, and this is no surprise. So when when you have a situation at the border, it has to be managed properly, it has to be managed in a humane way, uh, but it, this is no surprise and it's the failure of Congress to come up with comprehensive uh, immigration reform. That's a situation at our southern border. Meantime, our border with Canada is now back to normal. I know this is something that you and I have talked about a lot over the past three years or so, all COVID restrictions lifted. But you've now reached out to President Biden, urging the U.S. to work with Canada now to try to prevent these, as you call them, disjointed policies from happening again in the future. Basically, do the prep work now to avoid the chaos that we all went through. What does that mean specifically? And are you getting feedback at all from the administration? Well, people went through hell the past 36 months, uh, generally speaking, but also as it relates to the border. Uh, the United States and Canada, uh, our economies are deeply integrated, our life qualities are deeply integrated, and uh, the policies and restrictions that were placed at the U.S.-Canadian border over the past 36 months were not done in a coordinated way uh, that was disjointed, it was frustrating for people, it undermined uh, the economic benefits that normally occur. Uh, uh, as it relates to the border in the U.S. and federal, uh, U.S. Canadian, U.S. and Canadian federal governments need to do a much better job in coordinating uh, policies at re as it relates to restrictions and lifting those restrictions. What typically happens in times of emergency, whether it's uh, September uh, 11, 2001, or the pandemic, is restrictions are placed uh, on uh, on movement uh, as a precautionary measure. But when that uh, emergency dissipates, uh, it's, they're very slow to uh, lift those restrictions. And that's what I'm calling on uh, Canadian and U.S. federal officials to begin doing now. Establish a policy that uh, if and when, and it is likely that it will occur again at some point in the future, that it's done in a much more coordinated uh, way where both the U.S. and Canadian federal officials uh, are speaking with one voice. Another important topic, we are barreling toward possible default, which has never happened in the history of this country. The Treasury Secretary says we only have until June 1st to raise the debt ceiling. I wonder if you're aggravated that it now seems the negotiations are between just the president and the speaker, and, and those negotiations may have sort of fallen off uh, all, all of a sudden. Um, and where do you stand on the president invoking the 14th Amendment? Because Congress has basically told the administration, we passed all these spending bills, you need to spend all this money. At the same time, we passed this debt ceiling, so you can't you can't borrow more money to pay those bills. The administration can't do both of those things. Should the president just keep paying the bills? 
Yeah, the president should invoke the 14th Amendment. Uh, the full faith and credit of the United States shall not be questioned. Uh, that is very, very clear. Uh, we cannot afford uh, in this country to have a severe recession, uh, to lose 8 million jobs. Uh, it's, it's a very, very serious matter. Get back to the negotiating table. And, uh, but I think that the president needs to, on behalf of the American people, invoke the 14th Amendment. Congress can't make a budget. And that is a law in and of itself, and not provide the resources without anticipating that uh, the, the debt ceiling will be raised. Keep in mind, since 1960, the debt ceiling has been raised uh, 79 times, mostly under Republican presidencies. Last administration, it was raised three times with an accumulation of debt of $8 trillion. The other thing that's important here, Michael, is that 75% of the U.S. debt is owned by Americans. It's Social Security, it's Medicare, it's uh, people that buy uh, Treasury bonds, uh, people's savings, their retirement savings, their family savings. All of that will be jeopardized by a default. So Republicans have raised the debt ceiling previously and most recently under the previous administration three times uh, without any of this nonsense. It's dangerous and, uh, and they need to negotiate this thing as best they can. But if that falls short, the president has an obligation to the economy of this nation and to the people of this nation to invoke the 14th Amendment and stop this nonsense. Representative Brian Higgins, a Democrat in the 26th District here in New York. Uh, thanks for your time joining us there from Buffalo's waterfront. We appreciate it. Thanks, Michael.